Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'll swallow your soul. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss The Evil Dead by director Sam Raimi, starring Bruce Campbell. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for The Evil Dead? Well, the story follows five teens who are driving to a cabin in the woods for a weekend of debauchery, drinking and drugs. In a horror movie? In a horror movie. <laughs> they come across a tape recorder with the taped recordings of Professor Noby, who had been staying at the cabin previously. He had been trying to decipher the Nocturum Demento, the Book of the Dead. They unsurprisingly play the recordings and end up releasing a dark evil spirit in the woods, which starts to possess each one of them one by one. Before you, one by one, we will take you. Where to begin with the Evil Dead? This is, for me, the definitive cult classic movie. Uh, I remember having this this film on a VHS tape, and I was aware uh, when I had this tape. That it was a video nasty. That it was currently unavailable anywhere. You go into the video stores and you see your Hellraisers and your Freddies and your yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacres. You'd never ever see the Evil Dead in there. And that was because at the time this film came out, it sort of, it, it exploded when it came over here in, uh, in Europe. And people wanted to see this film because yeah. it kicked up such a storm over in America when it came out. And who would have suspected that a horror film made by a bunch of 21, 23 year olds could have such an impact on the world, on the world of film? Yeah. Uh, you could also probably attribute the fact that Stephen King added his tagline onto the, onto the film and that was printed front and center on the box. And that got everyone interested as well to see what all the fuss was about. And this film is an incredibly over the top, gory violent, nasty film. But I love it. Which means... Party down! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love this film. It's because Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell and Rob Tappert have just gone on to prove themselves that even though they had no money back then, yeah. they could still create something from nothing over a four-year project. As an independent film, I mean... Let's tick off the stuff that they did. They found an old cabin. They didn't build it. It wasn't a set. It was just an old cabin in, a, in the woods. They went out there and they brought their own lights, their own little cameras. They had their own prosthetics, their own gore effects. They cut holes in the floor so that people could put limbs in places. They had people just running through the woods and tripping over. If you fell and cut yourself, there was no ambulance to pick you up. You had to literally walk half a mile back to the main road and then flag somebody down to go out. They filmed during the winter, ended up cutting up half the cottage just to keep themselves warm. They used <laughs> bits of glass, not contact lenses, bits of glass to cover their eyes so that they could get the demonic look. They had to replace actors with extras and cover the extras with makeup to look like the actors just to get the shot that they... The list goes on. There are many a historical book written by Raimi, Tapper and Campbell just to cover the, the excruciating turmoil they went through just to film The Evil Dead. Well, let me tell you, that movie gave me a Vietnam-like resonance in my life. I went home, back home to Michigan. I slept on the floor of my room. There was a beautiful, comfortable bed. I slept on the floor of my bed for probably two months. And my mother was like, uh, quick question, Bruce, why are you sleeping on the floor? And I, and I started growing a beard. And then, like Gary said, the film gets released and the government turn around and go, nope, <laughs> ban it. Ban it! We do not want our children watching this. This is the doorway to Satan. You cannot see this thing. You cannot. You cannot learn. You're not allowed to learn how to become an independent filmmaker from this. Directors have watched Evil Dead and gone on to greater, bigger things, all from watching this <laughs> tiny little film. Well, it's also because this was a very interesting point in the film world as well, and also in distribution. And 
obviously the video nasty sort of eras, you've got Tex Chainsaw Massacre, The yeah. Hills Have Eyes, and The Evil Dead, sort of three of the big ones. And it was about the, the government and sort of the councils just trying to dictate what adult entertainment should exist. Yeah. And so it was them saying, even though you're adults and you should choose your own entertainment, we're saying you can't. And so all these videos, I mean, there were sieges, there were house raids. Yeah. These these films, people, the government operatives were coming into people's houses and taking these films away because they were illegal. <laughs> illegal films? I mean, it's hard to even fathom that today. Yeah. And so it also at the same time with distribution, it was, uh, it, VHS tapes were pretty new. And so film companies were realizing that more people were watching these VHS tapes than were actually going into the cinema. Yeah. And so they were selling like crazy. So there was lots of different distributors that were trying to get in on, on going, yes, video nasties to block those videos so that their videos could get through. It's all kind of crazy. But when you re-look at The Evil Dead now, everyone remembers it as being the horror movie of the trilogy. Although watching it now, there is a lot of comedy in there too. <laughs> yeah. And you, you always remember that, that Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell and Tapper were all in were all huge fans of the Three Stooges. Yeah. And so if if you're aware of the Stooges comedy, you'll see the bits in the original Evil Dead that are in there for comic effect. Though it still went straight through with the, the unrated sort of certificate. <laughs> Let's get into the film. I, 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 I'm going to tell you right now, these films are just personal to me. And The Evil Dead, when we said about sitting down and review it, I got my pen out, I got my notepad out, just like I do for every film. And then I just, from memory, just wrote down all of the things I would remember, just so I could watch the film. Watching them drive up to the cabin, you know, just, just the camera shots alone, that opening shot of the camera coming out of the swamp the bone noise that comes with it the little kind of weird growling you have from whatever this force is it actually sam raimi's voice <laughs> yeah yeah on on a the camera's on a plank of wood on a bike being rode through you then cut to the car you watch all the teens they're all happy laughing and joking and then you got that evil truck presence coming at a weird <laughs> angle it's the film literally just starts with evilness evilness just being thrown at you it does seem uh, i'm gonna admit this right now before we get too far into this it is a bit ropey and a bit cheesy nowadays, but you've got to remember back in 81 or 83, like we said, you know, people had never seen stuff like this. So hitting them right at the start with a scary scene, like the teens are going to get killed by a truck right at the beginning, gets people on the edge of their seat. Here. What the hell was that? Are you trying to kill us? Then you have that awesome, I, I was re-watching it, that awesome quiet drive of the car towards the cabin. I do love the fact that they also just passed Sam Raimi and Rob Tapper yeah. hitchhiking on the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just waving at the camera. <laughs> but yeah, that, that slow POV drive as it goes through and you've got the branches hitting the camera as it yeah. goes in. It's almost like the trees are attacking the audience yeah. as they drive up to the cabin. And it's so very creepy because when they get out of the car, they're sort of a little bit laughing and joking, passing their luggage around but it's that that swing yeah just methodically banging into the side of the cabin which eerily stops as soon as he puts the key in the door <laughs> and it's just like and then you and then the music you, you become aware of the music that sort of creepy piano uh, piano that just sort of underlines everything and it's not it's not uh forefront throughout the film for the most part but it's very subtle in places when it needs to be yeah and Fantastically, they also play with silence to an incredible effect. Yeah, this, well, this is it. I mean, as an independent film, they didn't have access to studios and all the audio things that they'd really need to make the film, you know, stand out. So having these long, quiet sequences, just following Scotty as he walks around the cabin and he looks around and the dust is flowing. Very, the lights. very reminiscent of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, especially yes. with all the chains and bones and stringy bits hanging around. Yeah, and yeah, you know, he walks around and he looks at the, uh, the the work shed, you know, and yeah, and then you cut back to everybody outside and they're all laughing and joking. I do like that bit where Campbell takes the, uh, the bag <laughs> to the gut and then takes one to the head. That's where it begins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bastards. 
Why are you torturing me like this? Why? Ashley J. Williams, for me, is one of the most iconic characters of, of cinema, cinema. Absolutely. Basically. I mean, I wanted to say horror, but as the other two sequels would come out, it's not really just focused on horror for the Evil Dead trilogy. But, yeah, Ash, in this film, he is just... He's kind of a weak teen, but it it's weird contrast because we, we, we'd be so used to weak female characters up at this point who are being chased by the monster constantly or running around. You know, the, as, as the film progresses, the evil starts to make its presence felt and Ash's sister Cheryl is the first one to really get noticed by it. The evil starts to make its presence felt to Cheryl by you know, forcing her to draw what we would later come to know as the Necronomicon and telling her basically to join us. Always <laughs> love that. Those two yeah. words, that deep voice. If I'm in the middle of the woods, staying in a cabin and somebody plays that, I'm reaching for the shotgun. Just don't ever play that trick on me. As, as, as we further progress, she is lured out. She's lured outside. And you sit there, as a fan of horror movies, you've probably seen a thousand horror movies up to this <laughs> point before you watched Evil Dead. But obviously, going back in, back in the day, you wouldn't have had all these rules to follow. And so watching her just kind of put on her dressing gown and wander outside like... I heard you. I heard you in the cellar. I know you're there, you... You'd be like, what's there? Yeah. What the fuck is coming? <laughs> Go and get the others, you know, yeah. anything. But I guess it's the, it's the evil. It's the force that's, that's bringing her out. I'm guessing it's manipulating her mind somehow. Yeah, well, it's the only way I can sort of excuse her behavior here. Well, I mean, she is hearing voices and... Well, she already got possessed in somehow by drawing the book, so... Yeah, there's... I actually, I was sat there thinking, you know, a lot of people would probably think that the... The three female characters being attacked first in the yeah. Evil Dead, you know, some might think, oh, well, you know, Sam Raimi's attacking on women, sexist discrimination, or something like that. I actually think it's the other way around. I actually think that they are the stronger of the characters because as the film progresses, Ash and Scotty get actually become quite weak. Killer! Killer! Killer if you can! Lover boy! <laughs> God forgive me. This is it. Once, once the evil takes the three girls, that kind of scares the crap out of me because they are actually, like I said, because they are kind of like the strong characters. When Cheryl gets possessed, you know, she 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 takes out somebody else. She takes out Linda, you know, and then Shelley is 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 the next one to be taken out. And the whole time, Cheryl is in the basement whacking on that basement lid waiting to get out and so you've got three possessed demons and two guys my money's on the demons for winning ash i don't want to die you're not gonna leave me are you ash are you i don't want to die you're not gonna leave me here are you are you ash <laughs> <laughs> All of the female characters are, are the first to fall. Yeah. And you're left with two male leads. When does that happen in a horror film? It's usually 99% of the time a single female heroine yes. that will survive the encounter. In this film, we don't have any lead actors per se. So you're like, well, all the three women are, are possessed or, or demonic. Yeah. We've seen that perhaps they can shift back into human form. Yeah. And then back into monster form again, although that's just a tease to torment uh, the, the, the two guys. Yeah. And we've seen Ash. He's been absolutely useless in these encounters. <laughs> yeah. when, when, when he's being fought, he gets grabbed and thrown and slammed against the wall and gets trapped under a piece of wood. A single piece of wood. I, I got I got to hand Bruce Campbell credit there. I, he made me believe that that piece of wood was stronger than him. In retrospect, Bruce Campbell went on to say that he probably should have played knocked out <laughs> instead of struggling underneath a piece of wood. But it, like I said, none of these people had acting lessons. They were just going with what they thought at the time would work. And yeah. it still works. It still captures the energy and excitement of 
what, of not knowing what's going on whilst these women are, are terrorizing these guys. And so with Ash being such a weak character, you're kind of looking at, at Scott for as the lead man because he's the one who's like, he's the one who takes charge. He's the one who grabs the axe and cuts up uh, the monsters. And so you're really following him. Until he goes and commits another horror movie, don't do, <laughs> yeah. and leaves the group anyway. Listen to me. Linda cannot walk with a leg like that. She can't even stand up. Well, then we'll leave her here. Until we can send somebody back. What are you, crazy? She's gonna Look, I'm fine. getting out. I don't care what happens to her. She's your girlfriend. You take care of her. I'm getting the hell out of here right now. <laughs> And so as soon as he steps outside, you're like, well, you're we're, dead. We're, yeah. And now we're left with this schmuck. You can't do anything <laughs> right. <laughs> I just think that's abs I think that that's absolutely brilliant filmmaking script from, from Sam Raimi. You know, to, I, I, I would love to have been a fly on the wall when he sat down with the three girls and said, right, I'm making a film. I'm making The Evil Dead. And you're going to be the first girl to get possessed. You're going to get raped by a tree. You know, I'd love to see how he turns to the <laughs> other girl and says, you're going to get your head cut off with a spade. <laughs> and you, you're going to get chopped up with an axe. After, after guess, we pull you out of the fire. Yeah, after <laughs> we pulled you out of the fire and stabbed you in the back with a dagger, which makes milk come out of your wrist. I'd have loved to have been there because <laughs> for th the looks on the girls' faces must have been like shock at first, but then, oh, you know what? Well, if he can do it, is he it can no do wonder it. that all the female actresses left production <laughs> halfway through? <laughs> Which brings you on to the the shemps, the fake shemps, the fake shemps. Because I think in the Evil Dead one, I think there's at least twenty fake shemps, and a fake shemp, if you're not aware, is where they brought in extras to be hands or legs or or feet or or even re replicating the entire actor with yeah. a wig and some makeup thrown on so you don't recognize the difference there's like three actresses that play linda in this film i think but that goes back to their love for the the three stooges you know yeah. the, 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 like we said re reading back on all the notes they there was the, the whole fake shem thing with the three stooges so they used that in their film and it works it works you know sam raimi knew he had to get a certain shot but he didn't have certain actors so he just replaced it and unless you've read the books and know it before sitting down watching the film you don't notice the film just the film just flows i, I was really surprised watching this again i've seen this film god, fucking, god knows how many times and it still brings in new things for me especially when i'm sat there and i'm like okay so Cheryl's just been possessed and she's stood in the middle of the room and she's done her big speech, which I just think is absolutely brilliant. Why have you disturbed our sleep? Awakened us from our ancient slumber. You will die! Everybody stays too calm, though. They are way too calm because she drops, she drops the pencil in the ankle, they chuck her into the basement, and then they just kind of carry on. get some sleep okay i really laugh at the dialogue at these <laughs> bits it's like they are in utter deniability <laughs> as to what's going on and it just adds to the to the dumbness of the ash character when he sat there and like one of them's already been chopped up to pieces and buried <laughs> Uh, Scotty's laying there dying, and he's like, "Have have some water." He's pouring water down this this corpse's throat, and he's just like, "We'll all go home tomorrow. Everything will be fine." Sun will be up in an hour or so, and we can all get out of here together. You, me, Linda, Shelley. Uh, no, not Shelley. She. Oh, we'll all be going home together. See, like, see, I don't blame Ash for that bit because I know he's been through a lot. So yeah. the psychological trauma is starting to set in heavily at that point. <laughs> it's the point before that that kind of gets me. Uh, Scotty's girlfriend has started to go slightly insane because obviously her friend has 
just gone completely demonically possessed. And so she goes to her bedroom and she's in her, she's in a bedroom in the cabin and you see the evil force outside the window and it flies at the glass in a really iconic shot, smashes in the glass and you hear her scream. And neither Scotty or Ash run to her help. Scotty walks really calmly to her room, looks out the window really calmly, one side, then to the other, walks back into the room more calmly, and you're getting ready for the jump scare. You know, it's, it's well done that he's so calm, you're on edge waiting for the jump scare. Then his girlfriend jumps out, there's this whole big attack sequence, and he stumbles, he's screaming, and he stumbles into the main room, and Ash sits on the sofa for half the fight. He watches his friend fight with his girlfriend. Her face is all messed up and he doesn't get up. Scott, he don't, I don't think he actually gets up until she, uh, Scotty cuts her hand and she chews for her own hand. And then even then he kind of stands her in complete shock. Yeah. Scotty deals with the whole thing. He stabs her in the back, he chops her up with the ax. It's the longest scream in cinema, I think. Oh. <laughs> and th I mean, obviously, that that sequence, uh, that and the rape sequence by the tree, would be the main reasons why this film was banned because people were completely in shock that they would just seen somebody being axed to death. Not forgetting, chunks. you also saw the pencil into the Achilles ankle, which still to this day makes me cringe. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, I, I'm kind of curious how possession in this film works. How does the Force go, now you're possessed, now you're possessed? It doesn't really, I, it doesn't really show how or say how they've yeah, just become possessed. Yeah. Because the other, the two guys had been attacked at this point, yet there's no possession this, taking over. But this is what, this is what I mean. The, the, the strong characters being taken first is that the, the Force... The, the evil presence, does, its main intention isn't just to possess everybody and take over. Because it needs souls to feast on. It needs flesh and blood and it loves all that stuff that demons love. So it, it, it aims for certain characters so that other characters will get scared. So that it can feed on the fear. So that it can torture these characters. That's why I think once she'd been stabbed in the ankle by, uh, by the pencil... She was open to being possessed, but the evil didn't make its presence felt until Scotty had left. So then it could then it could attack Ash from two different points. And you know? it really does attack him from two different points. You've got what could possibly be his sister. Yes, yeah, she is his sister. It's your sister, Cheryl! <laughs> Well, there's another another notch on the character of Ash that his sister is is tormenting him like this, and his girlfriend, and yeah. in two very different ways. You've got the demon in the in the cellar, and then you've got his girlfriend who looks glammed up or glazed over, yeah. and she's singing like lullaby songs to him, and it's driving him insane. And it is a little bit awkward when you see him backhand her a couple of times. It's kind of like, you really shouldn't do that to your girlfriend, <laughs> whether she's possessed or not. I don't know. Shut up! This is where I'm talking about the comedy. Yeah. When he's got the uh, the, the the huge, great big uh, piece of wood, yeah. and he smacks her around again and again and again until she's vomiting milk and coffee and blood and but it's just ridiculous because you can see that the piece of wood he's holding is broken in two anyway, and he's holding it together whilst hitting her and smacking her in the face, and it's violent. And she but just it's grabs funny. it, and she just grabs <laughs> it, lifts him up off the floor, and just throws him because obviously she's demonically possessed. I love that whole knife fight because yeah. 
you know, you've you've seen it. He did. He did, He doesn't want to kill her. I, you know, like we said, Ashes. Ash Ash wouldn't properly become the full on hero um, until he's defeated the evil version himself in Evil Dead Two. That's that's what I always believe. In this one, he's a young teen. You know, completely shocked by the fact that his friends are all dead. He can't go anywhere because the bridge is out. You know, he is literally just locked here, and he he. He kind of just wants to survive until morning and then maybe hopefully in the light of day address these things easier. He, he manages to overcome her and, and drags her outside and he gets the chainsaw. It's the first time you'd probably properly see the chainsaw in the Evil Dead series. He doesn't use it, no. which, which always makes me laugh. You know, everybody goes, oh God, Evil Dead, it's got a chainsaw in it. Yeah, but he doesn't actually do anything with it. He literally revs well, it up. The and thing is, you've got to realise how how little safety mattered when making this <laughs> yeah. film because that's not a prop chainsaw no. and that is not a dummy laying there and she you can see her sort of breathing and you can see her neck going a little bit as he's holding that chainsaw because if he sneezed yeah we, 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 that would be a murder if you know it's <laughs> And also later on in the film, they are also using a real shotgun or a real gun. That's not fake rounds. That's real rounds. When he's shooting out windows, he's shooting out windows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's amazing. So it's no wonder that the chainsaw really wasn't used yeah. in this film. <laughs> yeah. But she does get her head cut off, which I always think is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. You think the, the, the practical effects that they came up with to... to to achieve these, yeah, you know when one of the one of the characters gets shot in the face, you can see the the, the red rubber hose that's spitting the blood out. You can see all of the all of the things that that have aged now. Yeah, uh, like yeah. some of the stop motion effects or or some of the blood effects. Yeah, you you can see the technical faults there when they made them, especially when you look at the higher resolution versions of these films. I was going to say when you see the moon in the corner and it's covered in a big blue box. Yeah, where it was imposed in on top. See, I was going to say if you're watching Blu-ray versions of these films, you may not get as much appreciation as you would. If you had watched it on VHS like we did. Yeah. Because I, I still watched it on VHS. I had copies of the Blu-ray version. I was like, no, I'm watching my 20-year-old VHS copies because that's how that's how these films are supposed to be watched. Well, there's like four different versions of each film on different formats. On, yeah. So you've got the director's cut, the unrated cut, the original cut. You've got the special edition, collector's edition, anniversary edition. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> But yeah, the, I, I do like having finally the restored version because obviously from the VHS tape of my childhood yeah. to getting the first DVD when it comes out and seeing all those extra scenes, the extra gory parts, it was it kind of just brought horror back again for the for the modern age, especially considering the the the, the VHS format had just disappeared almost entirely. Yeah, and also coming when it came back on DVD. The Evil Dead was uh, the fifth best-selling movie of the year, which was the same year that Titanic came out. Yeah. And not only did the DVDs revitalize the franchise, you had video games, you had t-shirts, merchandise. It just launched the, the film into cult status, which it already was, yeah. but it just brought it from the video nasty era, era to everybody, and it was accessible in all of its gory form. <laughs> And this film hasn't aged badly, despite the, the 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 special effects being a little bit ropey. The camera work in this film oh. is phenomenal. This film uh, inspired me to want to make films. My favourite scene in the film is the entire sequence where the camera is sort of tilted at a yeah. 45 oh. degree angle. And he's walking towards the bridge. Or when he's walking towards the Love bridge. That. Well, that's, again, because it was the technical abilities of when they were filming it over the four-year period. But it's, it's the camera when it's panning across the, the rafters of the ceiling and yeah. making the, the sound effect as it goes past. It's the camera angle that comes around and loops all the way around Ash as he's walking through the cabin. It's so eerie that it's just at a, that bizarre angle. And 
when they were making the film, everyone thought that Sam Raimi had been smoking too much pot <laughs> and was just like, yeah, I'm going to do this and this. They didn't think it would work. And for me, it's one of the most unsettling parts of the film. The editing in the film, spot on. The music of the film, it rises and it pitches exactly where it needs to. Uh, I, I cannot fault the technical making of this film. It is still fantastic. I have numerous favourite scenes in this film. Uh, but actually, I don't, don't actually have the gory scenes as my favourite films. As the years have gone on... All of the sequences with Bruce Campbell being tortured by the Evil Dead have always have always stood out for me. The 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 first the first time with the evil tricking Ash, you know, his girlfriend's just turned human, and then his sister's turned human, and you don't want him to open the cellar, but you're you're intrigued to you want to see is she is she back human, and then the, the big jump scare, the the sequence in the basement where he goes down looking for shotgun shells. And then the whole basement comes alive and the camera starts going and the music's playing and the blood starts spurting out from all the pipes and the place just starts going crazy. It's, it's really unsettling. The, the sequence where Ash is, like I said, walking around the cabin on his own, you've got that cool camera angle over the rafters and then him walking up to the mirror and putting his hand into the glass it that itself is just crazy <laughs> and then just the whole ending everything is built up from the moment from the moment you heard the word join us while cheryl was at the window all the way up to Cheryl hitting her own brother with the fire poker and Ash throwing the book into the fire and the, the stop motion effects of the clay and gore being exploded out of bodies and everything's melting and then Ash walks out the door and the thing comes flying down into his face and you're like, ah, is it over? I highly, 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 highly recommend The Evil Dead. I can't recommend The Evil Dead enough. I think that there are audiences now that are still not even aware of the franchise in its existence. Yeah. Uh, with The Evil Dead continuation coming later this October with Ash versus The Evil Dead... Uh, I think people are going to come back and re-notice this film. Obviously, it was also remade uh, in 2013 by Fede Alvarez, but it had the backing of Bruce Campbell and Rob Tappert and Sam Raimi, and, and it was made sort of by the family behind yeah. The Evil Dead. Yes, the remake to this kind of missed some of the points. It kind of faltered in a few areas, but it was still an entertaining film all the same. It makes The, the remake makes this one look like an art piece. I've always believed. This, this film is an art piece. Like I said, it was an, it's an inspiration to filmmakers everywhere. This film's influence even reaches into other directors that have, that have seen The Evil Dead. And of course, within The Evil Dead, there is a poster for The Hills Have Eyes yeah. in the background, which is a nod to Wes Craven, who put a Jaws poster in his movie. So in Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street, there's a character laying there watching the Evil Dead movies. And so the, the back and forth would continue from there between Sam Raimi and, and Wes Craven. Just a small bit of trivia for you. Yeah. Of course, another bit of trivia for you was that the film was originally called The Book of the Dead until it was changed because they thought the audiences would think it was a movie they'd have to read from beginning <laughs> to end. Um, of course, this, also, this film also introduced the classic car uh, of Sam Raimi, who, yeah. who that car would would be in pretty much every one of his films. Yeah, you know, there's one last bit of trivia that I've got for you, and okay. that is the actual playback translation of the tape recorder, the yeah. thing that actually raises the demon out of the ground, which will go and kill everybody. Yeah. The actual translation is uh, Sam Raimi and Rob Tapper are the two hitchhikers on the road. 
tattieren man noch, man sie son hasan so bar. Saman la rosa, dar his hiker dans de rosa. I also do like the fact that they had to ad lib a lot of the dialogue. One of one of my things that makes me laugh is when they're sat there drinking, and it's sort of like it's sort of a bit they're sort of fumbling yeah. their, their lines. It's like did they even have lines at this point? And I liked when you listen to the commentary, you find out that they all got really stoned before filming that scene, and because none of them knew then what they were doing. They just lost the whole day of filming and the whole night of filming because they were just giggling and laughing and didn't know what they were reacting to or not. So I like the fact that they had lived it. I like the fact that they were a bunch of potheads, and I I can't recommend this film enough. There's you, you want to you can go back and listen to the commentary tracks. You want to go and play the video games. Once you've become invested in this franchise, there's so much more for you, and it's such a rewarding experience. Yeah. I, the Evil Dead is a cult classic, and I have watched it more than 50 times, and I guarantee I'm going to watch it again and again. Thanks for watching Off the Shelf Reviews. <laughs>